Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns, your host here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover any activities that may be of interest to librarians across the state. We have topics presented by guest speakers and our own commission staff as we have this morning. And we do these sessions, um, they're free, we do them every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And they are recorded as this one is being, so if you're unable to watch one of our live sessions, we've got a little over two years worth now of recorded sessions that you can, <clears throat> excuse me, go back and watch. Uh, this morning we have a session being done by Sally Snyder, our um, children's, children's and youth. Young Adult Library Services Coordinator. That's the title, okay. <laughs> And she's going to give us uh, a heads up on the like, books and things you books you can use for this summer's uh, summer reading program. So I am going to hand over control to you. Thank you. Take it away, Sally. And uh, I have quite a few books on my list. And so I'll, for those of you who are familiar with my quote book talks or reviews, I go very quickly. <laughs> so that's why it's also good that we're recording it, so you can go back and and yeah. check on something again if you mm -hmm. want to. Oh, and also I should mention too, this whole PowerPoint presentation, all the book covers and everything will also be posted when uh, up online when the recording goes up too. So you'll be able to have access to that as well. So just go look. What was that book that I thought? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay, so this summer's summer reading program for uh, children, is, the title is One World, Many Stories. And the young adult title is You Are Here. So we're going to start with picture books. Mirror by Jeannie Baker is two stories told side by side. When you open the book, you have two stories in that book. So each story is, is bound to the out, what looks like the outside of the cover, when, if that makes any sense. Anyway, interesting. <laughs> one story, the story on the left, is about a boy in Sydney, Australia. And the other book is about a boy in Morocco. One is in English and one is, I believe it's in Arabic, I really am not positive. The stories show the differences between their lives, but also the similarities. It's a wonderful addition to your collection for this summer's theme. And keep your eye on the rug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bears, Bears, Bears by Bob Barner. Each two-page spread has an illustration and one sentence about different bears from around the world. It's a good introduction and could be fun for a toddler time. We'll ignore the fact that pandas technically are not bears. <laughs> Little kids aren't going to know that. <laughs> the back of the book has one more sentence each about the bears and a two-page spread of a world map that notes where the bears live now. Seaside Dreams by Janet Costa Bates. The longing for family left behind in the old country is evoked in this look at Grandma's 70th birthday celebration. Grandma tells her granddaughter Cora of how she still misses her sisters, even her sister, even though she left Cape Verde 40 years ago. Cora gives her a wonderful gift for her birthday. An author's note gives some information on Cape Verde, and a, and a brief glossary is also included. Flora's Very Windy Day by Jean Birdsall. Flora is tired of her younger brother getting into her thing, so they go outside, where the wind blows Crispin away. Flora kicks off her boots and lets the wind take her too. They encounter a number of animals and different items like rainbows and clouds. They all have a use for Crispin and want to keep him, but Flora always says, no, he's my brother and I'm taking him home. It's quite an adventurous day. Sunday Chutney by Erin Blobby. Sunday has lived all over the world because of her father's job. She handles the changes quite well since she says, I enjoy my own company and I have an excellent imagination. And she does have a lot of interests. She points out that moving so often means she is always starting at a new school, being the new kid. Mm -hmm. But Sunday can handle that and much more. It's a good look at some positives and negatives of having a traveling lifestyle. New Old Shoes by Charlotte Blessing. One child's brand new shoes are worn and enjoyed. The shoes talk about all the things they do with the child who selected them. Then they are placed in a box and sent across the ocean to Africa, where they once again are worn and joyed and do different things. And a third time and a fourth time they are used as hands for a scarecrow. Will there be a fifth time? We don't know. 
A one-page note at the end of the book talks about S-O-L-E, Force, S-O-U-L-S, Soul for Souls, which is an organization that sends used shoes to people who need them. So that might be something right. to look into yeah. for this summer. I should have checked before I did the show, but oh well, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Don't Look Now, Ed Bryant. Two brothers in the backyard are using the Don't Look Now excuse for distracting their brother so they can grab the thing the brother was using and playing with. <laughs> it soon escalates into almost a battle, and then they are riding the patio table down, down, down into another fantasy world. It takes teamwork for them to escape and to find a way home. Chavala and the Magic Bubble. Excuse me. Chavala loves to chew gum and blow big creative bubbles. One day she finds a new gum called Magic Chicle. When she chews it all at one time and blows a bu big, big bubble, she soon floats away over California, Arizona, Texas, and on to the jungles of the Yucatan of Me Mexico. Here she finds sapopia trees that produce the chicle, some chicleros who collect the chicle that drips from the trees, and a friendly little girl. Her magical adventure ends with her falling asleep to wake up at home. Colorful, whimsical art will attract readers, and there's good information in the author's note at the back of the book about Chicle and the Chicleros. And that little girl was her grandma. So Aww, she did a little nice. time travel, too. Annie, Adventure Annie Goes to Kindergarten by Tony Buzio is a follow-up to Adventure Annie Goes to Work, and this finds her eager for her first day of kindergarten. She is hoping for a wild animal or a circus or search and find adventure when she gets to kindergarten. But mom says, sometimes kindergarten is its own adventure. Exuberant artwork by Buzio adds to the fun. Maisie Goes on Vacation by Lucy Collin Cousins. <coughs> Excuse me. Maisie and her friend Cyril pack their bags and hop the train. They are going on vacation. The train takes them to the ocean where they have fun on the beach. It's a good first look at packing, traveling, and enjoying a visit to a new place. Mm -hmm. So it's, it says they're a Maisie First Experiences book. Nanook and Price spend the day ice fishing with their dog Yukon. They don't seem to notice that the ice they are on breaks away and takes them on a trip around the world. Keep an eye on the worms. See that little can of worms there? Oh, Keep an yeah. eye on what's up with the worms in each, <laughs> during the adventure. It's good fun with a touch of stereotyping. They, they do have an igloo in the early pages, mm. but it's a lot of fun. This is the second book about Willoughby following Willoughby and the Lion, and it finds him taking a trip to the moon through his closet. He wants to find where the moon went after it got smaller and smaller and now has disappeared. He makes a friend in a giant snail, finds a moon buggy, an empty space pod, and a way to rocket to the other side of the moon, where he finds his closet door in his way home. <laughs> it's quite an adventure for him, and now he knows where the moon goes. It's in his closet. Of course. <laughs> John Grandis has given us the travel game. After working hard all morning in the family business, a boy and his aunt play the travel game after lunch where the boy puts his finger on the spinning globe and they visit that place through the photos in their book, 1001 Pictures from Around the World. And after you read this book, of course, I hope you have a globe so that you can play the travel game with the kids at your story time, too. And maybe you can just go find some books on the shelf that have to do with those places. Big Chickens Go to Town by Leslie Halakowski. The four chickens are pecking on a bag of feed that's in the back of the pickup truck when the farmer begins to drive away. They are worried and confused, but they're not going to stop eating the feed, so they ride the truck into town. They get lost, and they fear that they will never see their farm again. They have a, a several adventures, and this book has great language and rhyming throughout. For example, the chickens bald, squalled, and caterwauled. As you read along, I think it's got great... Um, New words for kids to hear. It would be great for sound effects to try and have them do it. Well, yes, <laughs> how do you caterwaul? Yeah, that could be that nice mean? and noisy. <laughs> In Big Chickens Go to Town, oh wait, sorry, this is Duck, Duck, Moose by <laughs> Dave Hor Horowitz. Duck and Duck are getting ready to travel south. Moose wants to get pancakes, but everything is closed. Bear is hibernating, so he's no fun. So Moose decides to go along with the ducks. 
they have a lovely road trip and a great vacation in Florida before it is time to return home to New Hampshire. It's silly fun, and you know, maybe ducks would like to drive down to Florida instead of fly. Sure. Fievel's Flying Horses by Heidi Smith Hyde is set in the late 1800s. Fievel has come to America for a better life for himself and his family. He was a wood carver, and he finds a job making furniture to save money to bring his family over. It isn't until his cousin takes him to Coney Island that he finds a newer job carving horses for the carousel. He dreams of his wife and children and carves a horse for each one that reflects that individual's personality and traits. His family eventually, three years later, joins him in America. It includes a historical note at the back of the book. A girl and her mother in Say Hello by Rachel Isadora walk to Abuela Rosa's house saying hello to the many different people along the way in Japanese, Arabic, Spanish, and other languages. Bright, colorful collages illustrate the story. Pronunciation for nine of the words is given at the back of the book. That's a great way to start story time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Goal by Mina Hover, okay, Hava Herbin. There we go. Several boys who live in a village in South Africa are thrilled to begin their daily soccer game playing after all their work is done. One boy has a brand new soccer ball. It's his prize for being the class's best reader. When some bullies come along, the boys find a clever way to trick them. It has wonderful illustrations that highlight the story of hard work, some danger, and the joy of play. Bussing Brewster by Richard Michelson. In 1974, Brewster is ready for first grade. He's going to go to his neighborhood school, Franklin, when he learns that he and his older brother are going to be bused to the white school, Central, instead. This fictional story gives an account of their first day at the new school, the protesters and students causing trouble, but it all is told with the audience in mind. A rock flying through the bus window and some pushing at the water fountain are the only instances instances of violence included in the book. It's a look at one time in our nation's history. Field Trip Day by Lynn Plourd. Mrs. Shepard's class, as seen in Book Fair Day and School Picture Day and more, are visiting a local organic farm. While they learn things, they are also constantly having to find where Juan Dornoma is. See the little boy almost, you know, down the path there Going past the oh behind the um, almost to the barn, yeah. that's him. He's always <laughs> ahead of everybody else. They have to keep track of him. And they also uh, two of the farmer's calves are missing, so the class helps him try to find his calves. It's good fun, and you learn a lot while you're visiting the farm. Rose's Garden by Peter H. Reynolds. Rose travels around the world in her teapot, collecting seeds from all the places she has been. Eventually, she finds just the right place in the city to plant her seeds. But when she gets back to her teapot, the seeds have all been eaten by the birds. There's just a few in the very bottom. So she plants those few and waits. The children of the city, who have also come from all over the world, bring her their stories and paper flowers. It's a beautiful book, a wonderful story, and this is based on Rose Kennedy. Oh, nice. which is nice to read mm -hmm. about in the back of the book. Brownie and Pearl Step Out by Cynthia Ryland. Going someplace new, in this case to a birthday party, Brownie is a little shy and she's afraid to knock on the door. But Pearl, the kitten, has no problem knocking on the door for her. <laughs> and they have a wonderful time at the party. And I think noticing that, that kids going to somebody else's house might be a new experience for mm -hmm. them to do that all by themselves. And this is a good story to read to help with that. Erica San by Alan Say is a picture book for a little bit older reader. School Library Journal says grades 3 to 5. As a child, Erica loved the small print of a lighted cottage her grandpa had bought in Japan many years ago. As she grew, she kept thinking about that. She studied Jap Japan and Japanese in school, and after college, she got a teaching job on a remote island in Japan. She enjoys living in Japan, makes friends there, and eventually finds a cottage just like the one in her grandfather's print. So it's a lovely story mm -hmm. about becoming an immigrant to another country. Mm -hmm. Far, Far Away by John Siegel. 
A disagreement at the grocery store, which occurs on the title page, title page verso, and dedication page, so be watching for that at the very beginning of the book, prompts a young pig to decide to run away from home. Told all in brief dialogue, the mother suggests the boy take a tent, and then a sleeping bag, and on and on, all the many things he should take with him. The coup de grace is that when she mentions he can't take a piece of cake with him because the cake isn't done yet. Oh. It hits an idea that has occurred to almost every kid and includes some humor for the adult who's sharing the story with him. My Name is Sungol by Karen Lynn Williams and Kadra Mohammed. Refugees from Sudan, Sungol, his mother and his sister find a home in the U.S. Their sponsor, the nurse, the teachers, the children, no one can pronounce his name. He cleverly designs a t-shirt to let everyone know his name is Sun Goal. Mm -hmm. Gives a sense of the many changes when a family moves to a new country. A few picture book, non-fiction picture books. In the Belly of an Ox by Rebecca Bond. This is a picture book biography of two brothers who grew up loving to study wildlife in Yorkshire, England, but as adults worked in publishing in London and they missed the countryside. When Cherry, one of the brothers, bought a new camera, he took it to the country and photographed a bird's nest. And that gave them an idea. They spent three years, invented all kinds of blinds, and reportedly traveled 30,000 miles around Britain before their book came out in 1895, British Bird's Nests. They changed how people related to nature. After they saw that book, other people went out with cameras to try and photograph nature. <clears throat> wow. It includes some actual photos <clears throat> taken by them and of them. It's a terrific look at how inspiration can change the world and really let us know how things um, do actually occur in the animal kingdom. Mais oui, certainement, my first book of French words by Katie R. Cudella. Two-page photographs of familiar scenes include labels giving the French word and the pronunciation for 130 basic nouns. A great mm -hmm. starting point for kids to learn about other languages mm -hmm. than our own. Um, the pages are not too cluttered with text, and, and it has some good choices in there. And you can also get it in Spanish. Spanish. The very same pictures, the very same words in the Spanish language. Oh, that's nice. If they're the same, then they can learn yeah. two, and they, they can make the connection they that can. this is it in French, and here's the same exact picture in Spanish. Nice. I think so, too. Kindergarten Day, USA and China by Trish Marks. It's a look at a day in a kindergarten class in the USA, and then flip the book. It's a day in the kindergarten class in China. Basic information, but a fun look at a familiar place in a different country. Zarafa, The Giraffe Who Walked to the King by Judith St. George. There have been several books out recently about the giraffe that the king of, of uh, France received from the king of the ruler of Egypt. Mm. But this one I, I chose because it's uh, kind of whimsical and fun. I like the artwork and so, you know, you might pick a different one. That's fine. It's a story of a young giraffe's journey from the Sudan and Africa to Paris. She traveled by boat to Alexandria and by ship to Marseille. From there she walked to Paris, drawing crowds all along the way. It took 41 days. She had sailed 2,000 miles down the Nile River, more than 1,500 miles across the Mediterranean Sea, and walked more than 500 miles to Paris. So, wow. you know, think about doing that yourself. <laughs> <laughs> she could take her time, though. They let her go at her pace. Her, oh, yes. <laughs> Don't want to rush you. Here are some beginning readers that fit, fit the theme. All Aboard by Jan and Mike Berenstain. The Bear family is taking a trip across Bear Country to visit their Aunt Tilly. And this book is all about the trip. Brother and sister find the train exciting. They enjoy looking out the window with their parents, and they especially enjoy visiting the engineer. There are three books about Dodsworth. The first is Dodsworth in New York by Tim Egan. Dodsworth has decided that he wants an adventure. He stops at his favorite place for pancakes and then boards the train for New York. Hodges Duck has stowed away in his suitcase, and his visit to New York is full of hunting for the duck and seeing some sights along the way. When Dodgeworth, Dodsworth calls Hodges to tell him where his duck is, Hodges apologizes for the duck ruining his adventure. Dodsworth's reply is wonderful. Ruined it? He was the adventure. <laughs> so off he goes with the duck to Paris. Dodsworth in Paris. Dodsworth and his friend the duck have just arrived via ship in Paris. 
They visit some sites and have some adventures, but it would be a lot easier if the duck would stop causing trouble. Apparently, he's not always a good travel companion. <laughs> but it's exciting, he is. at least. <laughs> and on to London, Dotsworth in London. A hot air balloon drops Dotsworth and the duck in London. A case of mistaken identity results in Dotsworth accompanying the wrong duck around London. And will he find the right duck to bring him home again? Fiction for grades two to five or so. We'll start with our friend Humphrey. Uh, yeah. Summer According to Humphrey by Betty G. Burney is the sixth book about Humphrey. He is upset when he learns that school is ending. What will he and Og do? He is, he's thinking there will never be school again. Well, it's no problem. They are joining Ms. Mack, who is just back from Brazil, and some other people he knows at Camp Happy Hollow. A new place to explore, new friends along with old, and a fun or scary summer is ahead. It maintains the interest level and the quality of the series. I think she's doing a terrific job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when series get going, they start getting too repetitive, but yeah. um, the quality is still very good. Tortilla Sun by Jennifer Cervantes. Izzy is 12, and she is sent from California to a tiny town in New Mexico to spend the summer with her grandmother, her mother's mother. She hasn't seen her since she was six. It is here that she learns about her Hispanic heritage, and she learns some more about her father. Her mother has not talked about him since his death, and Izzy longs to know more. Her journey to explore the past brings her love and sorrow, and includes some magic realism. The title also includes a glossary of Spanish words and a recipe for flour tortillas. Only One Year by Andrea Chang. Sharon, nine, and her younger sister are surprised and saddened that their parents are sending their two-year-old brother, Didi, to China for a year to live with his grandparents. The emptiness when he first leaves and their discomfort when he returns are well portrayed. This book includes an author's note at the back of the book where she explains that this is a, a, a common practice for Chinese people when they are able to send their, their very young children to back to meet other family members and get to know their heritage. Extra credit by Andrew Clements. Abby Carson has let her studies go, and now she may have to repeat the sixth grade. She agrees to the teacher's conditions, including an extra credit project, becoming a pen pal to a child in another country. She selects Afghanistan. Some chapters are told from the point of view of Sadid Bayat, who's 11. He's the best student in his small school in Afghanistan. And as they learn more about each other, the discomfort of others causes trouble. He at first doesn't want to write to her because that's beneath him, but he oh. he soon learns that um, it's really quite interesting and fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just happen to love this series, so here we go. Oh, yeah. How to Ride a Dragon Storm by Cressida Cowell. Um, this is book seven in this series, and in this book, Hiccup, Fish Lakes, and Kamikaze are supposed to be competing in the intertribal friendly swimming race. Instead, they end up on Norbert the Nutjob's large boat. He and his crew are taking them along on their trip to America. Many adventures occur during the trip, and it's, this series is also still great fun. Island Sting by Bonnie J. Doerr was originally published in 2003 as Kenzie's Key, but it has been significantly revised according to the book jacket. Hmm. Kenzie and her mom have just moved to the Big Pine Key in Florida from New York since splitting with her father. Kenzie rescued a key deer from drowning in a canal, and now she wants to learn all about them. And she wouldn't mind getting to know Angelo a little better, too. Kenzie has a lot to learn about this new place, the beauty and the dangers. This is book two about Sassy, The Birthday Storm, by Sharon M. Draper. Sassy, who is nine, and her family travel from Ohio to their grandparents' home in Florida to celebrate Grammy's birthday. A hurricane may be on the way, and when Sassy finds a sea turtle nest, Grammy contacts the man to check if the nest will be safe during the storm. The whole family ends up helping him move the nest. But will Grammy's birthday party be ruined? Little Bow in Italy by Julie Andrews Edwards and Emma Walton Hamilton. This is the third book about Little Bo. This is the first one I've run across. Um, Bo and her friend Billy are traveling on Lord and Lady Goodlad's yacht. Billy is working as a sailor. Bo hopes to find her other littermates as they travel around the shores of Italy, but they run into quite a spot of trouble. 
Full color illustrations on almost every two page spread will appeal to young readers and make the book feel very readable and doable. Lily is in fifth grade and she and her mother have just moved from the country to the city. She misses her best friend and the quiet freedom she had before. Now she must not wander on her own. Amanda is a class favorite and a bully too. Between a bully at school and nothing fun to do, Lily is thrilled when her neighbor invites her to visit the local pet shop. She meets the owner and his son, Nate, a 36-year-old with Down syndrome. Lily and Nate form a beginning friendship when she inadvertently causes him to overreact to something that she did. Okay, speaking a little bit louder. Or Prairie or Winter by Bonnie Giesert. This is the third book, the sequel to Prairie Summer and also Lessons. <clears throat> In 1955-56, Rachel, is, who is 12 and in sixth grade, loves school and her teacher, but living on a farm with no telephone is hard. Chores are worse in the cold. Her parents decide to have Rachel and her older sister stay in town to continue with school because the weather has been so bad. This will be a very different way of life. No chores for Rachel. She can't <laughs> wait. Flat <laughs> Stanley. Oh, has uh, new worldwide adventures. This is book five in this set, The Amazing Mexican Secret, and it is actually written by Josh Greenhut. Stanley is being sent to different places and countries to help people out. In the previous books, he traveled to Mount Rushmore, Egypt, Japan, and Canada. Now he is mailed to Mexico to help his friend Carlos find out what the secret ingredient is in his family's seasoning. Stanley hopes to meet Carlos's great-grandmother and convince her the secret will be safe with them. Plenty of illustrations and larger type will appeal to new chapter book readers. Mary Downing Hahn has written Clothes for the Season, a mystery story. Logan, 13, and his parents have just moved to a new town and into an old, creepy house. Their neighbor, Arthur, who is almost 12, quickly informs them that the previous owner was murdered in the house. <laughs> Logan does not want to spend time with goofy, irritating Arthur, but soon they are looking into who may have killed her and whether she embezzled money from the now-closed theme park, the Magic Forest. They're just thrown together. Turtle in Paradise by Jennifer L. Holm. Turtle is sent to live with her aunt and cousins in Key West when her mother is threatened with job, her job loss. She's a housekeeper and it's the Depression. Turtle finds herself in the midst of a new and unusual life. Her boy cousins are members of the diaper gang. They take care of the neighborhood babies for the day for candy, and they're good at it. <laughs> Turtle learns about their approach to daycare, things to be wary of like scorpions, and finds what might be a treasure map, an exciting summer for the newcomer, and it concludes with an author's note about what, how, what Key West was like in that time frame. This is the first book in a new series. The series is called Goddess Girls, Book One, and the title is Athena the Brain by Joan Holub and Suzanne Williams. Athena is 12 when she receives a message from her father, Zeus. She is summoned to attend Mount Olympus Academy with other god boys and goddess girls. Stunned to learn that Zeus is her father, she leaves her best friend's home and finds everything new at the academy. It's like middle school, middle school with pre-teen and teen gods and goddesses. So, you know, it's kind of double hard. <laughs> it's a fun, quick read with clever touches. Maybe you didn't know that the Trojan War was actually a class assignment in Heroology class. Very clever and fun. So and I'm assuming this will probably be a series of the different yes. gods and goddesses? There's four out so far. Ah, okay. um, the next one is Persephone the Phony. I've read that one, too. Um, this is the fourth book about Raymond and Graham. This one is Cool Campers. They're by Mike Knudsen. This is the first year they can go for the whole week at Camp Grizzly. They have great plans for being the coolest kids at camp, but somehow things get in their way. Like their cabin decides to be the toad claws instead of something cool like the sharks. They have some trouble, but they also have a great time. It's humorous with some lessons learned. Suzanne Lafleur has written Love, Aubrey. Aubrey, 11, is living alone since her mother left. We learn her father and younger sister were killed in a car accident. Her grandmother comes to Virginia and takes Aubrey home with her to Vermont. Aubrey has a lot to deal with, and at first she avoids doing so. 
With her grandmother and her new best friend's help, she begins to heal. Faith, Hope, and Ivy June by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. Ivy June has been chosen as her school's exchange student. She's in seventh grade. She will spend two weeks of spring vacation with Catherine Combs in Lexington, Kentucky. Then Catherine will spend two weeks at Ivy June's, June's home in Cole Country in the mountains of Kentucky. They may live in the same state, but both will feel culture shock and homesickness. Well written and the girls will connect, many girls will connect with the two main characters. Okay, I do love Down Girl and Sit. This is the book four in that series. Home on the Range by Lucy Nolan. Off on vacation with their masters to a dude ranch, Down Girl and Sid have their own unique take on the terrain, the local animals, and they just really don't understand why they should help move the cows from here to over there. It's a strange new world for the city dogs. Very silly and fun. Betty on the High Wire by Lisa Railsback. Bob O is 10 and she becomes Betty when she is adopted by an American family. She doesn't want to leave her unnamed country or the group of children she has led, but her best friend George is also being adopted. She goes along to help him get settled, thinking that she will run away back to her group of leftover kids who live where the circus used to be. Betty is resistant, but her adoptive family is more than understanding. This story of loss, love, and determination is an unusual approach to the refugee story. The Elephant's Tale by Lauren St. John is book four and the final book in the series. Martine, who is almost 12, and her grandmother are going to lose their South African game reserve unless something can be done about Reuben James' claim. Grandmother flies to London to see what she can find out about the claim, and Martine and her friend Ben hide on Mr. James' private plane and end up in the desert of Namibia. They have only days to save the, the uh, game reserve. Adventure animals, Martine's special ability to communicate with animals, all will appeal to tween readers. Shooting Kabul by N.H. Senzay. Fadi is 11 and he and his family flee Afghanistan but are heartbroken that during their flight Fadi's younger sister Mariam, who is six, is accidentally left behind. Others are searching for her and meanwhile Fadi and his family work to fit into their new lives in Oakland, California. Fadi must, must cope with bullies at school, especially after the events of 9-11. He finds a photography club at school to be perfect for him, and maybe winning the photo contest will help his family find Miriam. It's a, it's a good look at um, refugees, immigration, and learning a little bit more about some people that maybe we don't know very well. Alien Expedition by Pamela F. Service. This is book three. Agent Zack, who's about 11 or so, was adopted as a baby and he found out in book one that he is an alien agent for the Galactic Union and he was activated too early for the good of the earth. <laughs> he and his parents went a surprise trip to an archaeological dig in Mongolia. His parents are thrilled but Zack knows it's another secret assignment for him. He is to keep the dinosaur-like aliens, who also have a dig nearby, from being seen. He meets local his age, Jarl and Sege, and learns a bit about another culture. Humor and action will appeal to readers. Boys Without Names by Kamishur Seth. Kamish Kashmira. That's hard to say. Kashmira. Kashmira. Yeah, the last, <laughs> last name is Seth. Gopal is 11, and he and his family must leave their rural home, rural home in India and move to the city of Mumbai. His father disappears on the way to find Gopal's uncle, and they don't know what happened to him. Gopal wants to find work to help support his mother and six-year-old brother and sister. His naivete allows him to be drugged and sold to glue beads on frames all day with several other boys. Their lives are terrible, and Gopal is determined to escape. William S. and the Great Escape by Zilpha Keatley Snyder William, who's just one month short of being 13, has known for years he will run away. The Baggett family is just too mean. But now the older Baggett boys have flushed his sister's skinny pig down the toilet. It wasn't dead yet. And she is running away. Jancy convinces William that the four youngest Baggetts must all leave together. Jancy is 11, Trixie is 6, and Buddy is 4. They head for Aunt Fiona's house over 100 miles away. 
The journey is an adventure, but the fear that Aunt Fiona will not take them in hovers over William and Jancy. Phoebe Stone has given us the Romeo and Juliet code. Felicity is 11, and she arrives at her, at her grandmother's seaside home in Maine for her first visit and to escape the bombing of London during World War II. Her parents drop her off and soon leave. Felicity, now dubbed Flissy, is left with several mysteries, one being, where have her parents gone and why can't they write to her? Derek, 12, is recovering from polio, and the two are soon working together to discover the secrets of the house. Aunt Miami has an obsession with Romeo and Juliet. The cover is not the book. I don't know why they put this cover in here. Uh, they have adventures. They're trying to figure things out. They do not lay to, next to each other on a, on a <laughs> at all. Although Flissy is kind of taken with Derek, but that's it's as far metaphorical, as it all. maybe. Maybe that's it. I have to get beyond the obvious. Oh, okay, I think you've got it. Rich Wallace has given us sports camp. Riley, 11, one of the smallest and youngest campers, hopes to contribute to his cabin's total score in the annual competition for the Big Joe Trophy. Riley is a strong swimmer and runner, but not as skilled at basketball or baseball. Lots of sports action, a few pranks and spooky occurrences, or is it the power of suggestion, will appeal to sports-oriented readers. The cabin comes together as a team, and there is not much angst or homesickness, mostly just a lot of sports. Sarah Weeks has written, as simple as it seems, it's the summer after fifth grade. Verbena learns that her aunt and uncle are her real parents and that her real, what, who she thought were her real parents are actually her aunt and uncle. She also learns that her aunt drank while she was pregnant and that's the cause of Verbena's learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. This information sends her on a mean spree and she can't stop picking on her mother, her, the lady she believes is her mother. Temporary new neighbors, Pooch and his mother, give Verbie something to do during the summer. Pooch is convinced that Verbie is a ghost, so she plays along. <laughs> Things are wrapped up by the end of the book. This will be a little hard for adults to believe, but I think that kids will just dive right in and enjoy it. Rosemary Wells has written My Havana, Memories of a Cuban Boyhood. It's a fictionalized account of the memories of Segundino Fernandez, now an architect in New York. As a child, he had loved the buildings of Havana and often stopped to sketch them. In 1954, at age six, he and his parents traveled to Spain to help his father's older brother after a fall from a roof. They are there for two years before they return to Havana. He is now eight, and now he must learn to eliminate the TH sound instead of the S that he developed while in Spain. Um, in 1959, they then leave Cuba for New York to join other family members because it is no longer safe for them in Cuba. Segundino has another adjustment to make and English to learn. He finds a way to handle his homesickness. He designs a paper replica of Havana. And those are the, the buildings around him. Very interesting and short. Short book, mm -hmm. lots of illustrations, but a, a great story. Eve Yola Halem has written Un Escape Under the Forever Sky. Lucy is 13 and she has lived in many places around the world due to her parents' jobs. Right now, her father is in Indonesia, and her mother is the American ambassador to Ethiopia, so she is living in the protected American compound in Addis Ababa. It feels like prison to her, and she wonders if she will ever get to see the real Ethiopia. She has a very good friend who also lives in that compound, and one day, they find a way to sneak off to their favorite restaurant, and then Lucy finds herself kidnapped. Her escape from the kidnappers and her trek through a wild part of Africa will intrigue readers, and it includes an incidence of lions protecting Lucy from the kidnappers that the author notes um, there was a real occurrence of that in 2005, and she, that's why she put it into her book. Some nonfiction for grades two to five or so. Linda Glazer has written Emma's poem, The Voice of the Statue of Liberty. A picture book look at the life of Emma Lazarus and how she came to write the poem we all know so well, huh? Give Me Your Tired, Your Poor. She was born to wealth, but after a visit to Ward's Island, where she first encountered the poor struggling immigrants hoping for a better life, she began to help by teaching English to them and writing about their lives. She was one of a number of writers, including Mark Twain, asked to write something that would be sold to help pay for the pedestal for the Statue of Liberty. The ending of her poem stays with us today. 
and the poem in this complete form is in the book too at the back. Mazes Around the World by Mary D. Lankford. A two-page spread on each type of maze is included in the book with one page of text and the other page an illustration. Good basic information on possible reasons why they were created and any legends that may accompany them. It's likely to arouse curiosity for more information. I love this series too. And this one you wouldn't want to explore with Marco Polo. <laughs> the series continues with this title and others. A trip with Marco Polo fits this summer's theme perfectly, but as the subtitle says, it's a really long trip you would rather not take. Yes. Because the people who went with him did not survive. <laughs> Good information is interspersed with humor and comical illustrations. Fiction for younger teens. Now we're into our You Are Here section of the summer reading program. Alchemy and Maggie Swan by Karen Cushman. It's in the same vein as Catherine called Birdie and the Midwife's Apprentice. This title is as enjoyable. Maggie, unable to walk without her two sticks, has been sent to London to live with her father, an alchemist, and someone she knows nothing about. For some reason he was expecting a boy and was quite disappointed with Maggie. London is a very different from her former home of village and countryside, but she is trying to fit in and find her place. Dark Life by Cat Falls is futuristic. Ty, 15, is the first child born in the settlement under the ocean, and he is most at home in the sea. Topsiders, those who live on land, are an irritation to him at best. Times are hard as a sea blight gang regularly attacks and pillages the government supply ships headed for the settlement. He accidentally encounters Gemma, 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 also 15, who is looking for her brother, and Ty feels he has to help. There's lots of action. Book list favorably compared it to a western. It makes the story move quickly, and Ty is a son to be proud of. The Red Umbrella by Cristina Diaz-Gonzalez. Beginning in May of 1962, we join Lucia, 14, and her seven-year-old brother Frankie on the beach of Cuba. A convoy of soldiers passes them, and Lucia is stunned. Castro is taking over the government. Her parents do not agree with politics and actions, but try not to be noticed. They finally decide to send their children to the U.S. without them. Lucia and Frankie are fortunate that they go together to a foster home in Grand Island, Nebraska. Adjusting to life on the plains, dealing with high school issues, and worrying about their parents is a lot to handle. It's an excellent look at refugees and all they have been through that will give readers something to think about when they encounter new refugees and immigrants in their town. And I would like to say that the family that they go visit is portrayed in a very favorable light, which is a nice thing yeah. for Grand Island, Nebraska. Nice for local, yes, yes. local readers. <laughs> Living Hell by Katherine Jinx. The only life Cheney, who is 17, has known is traveling through space in Plexus, the ship that the passengers and crew hope will take them all to a new habitable planet. But now the ship that provided all they need has passed through a radiation wave. It is becoming organic, and it is treating the passengers and scientists as if they are parasites. A battle for survival with scientific facts thrown in, this should appeal to reluctant readers and action readers. Peg Carrot has written Runaway Twin. A lot of this story takes place in Nebraska, although not many towns are named. Alliance is. Hmm. Sunny is 13, and she has been in foster care since her mother and grandmother died in a car accident when she and her twin, Star, were three. The twins were separated, and Sunny went through two relatives before ending up back in Nebraska. And she has been in several foster homes, always hoping someday to reunite with her sister. When she finds some cash on the trail, she tries to find the owner, and when no one steps up, she runs away using the money to finance her trip to find her sister. A rescued dog, boys playing a trick, and a tornado make the trip harder. A strong, determined girl who always tries to do the right thing and is unwilling to give up on her dream, though it may not turn out as she wishes. The Heart is Not a Size by Beth Kephart. Georgia talks her best friend Riley into joining a service group during the summer before their senior year in high school. They will help build a bathroom for the poor community of an opera outside Juarez, Mexico. It is hot, hard, dirty work, but they have time for fun in the evening. During this trip, Georgia finally says something to Riley about her obvious to Georgia anorexia ruining their friendship. This is another lyrical book with a slow pace, so it's not for every reader, but it's a very well-told story. 
Oh, I love Schooled. <laughs> of course, it's by Gordon Corman, so why, <laughs> why wouldn't I? Gordon Corman, Schooled. Cap, his name is Capricorn. Cap Anderson has lived his entire life on the commune with his grandmother. Everyone else left years ago. When she falls and breaks a hip, Cap must go to a foster home and to Claveridge Middle School. He is in his element on the commune, but he knows nothing about life in our world. He approaches middle school with curiosity and eagerness. Zach Powers sees a victim and is determined to squash him. But Cap doesn't play by the rules. He doesn't know them. It has humor and heart. The Fences Between Us by Kirby Lawson, Larson is part of the Dear America series. Piper is 13 and then turns 14, and she is upset when her brother joins the Navy just after his high school graduation in June of 1941. Her father is a pastor for a Japanese Baptist church. Piper has a lot to handle after her brother survives Pearl Harbor and is assigned to another battleship. At home, local sentiments begin to go bad for the Japanese people she has known all her life. When most of his congregation is sent to an internment camp, Piper's father has them both follow and serve them in Idaho. Well written, giving a sense of the fear for those in danger and a feeling of empathy for those incarcerated for their heritage. Far from Gringo Land by Edward Myers. Rick is 17 and he travels from his home in Colorado to spend the summer living with family friends, the Romeros, in Santo Domingo, Mexico. He is there to improve his Spanish and help them build a new house. He has a little culture shock and some discomfort at first with the family because he hasn't seen them for 10 years. The work is backbreaking, but he is determined to work as hard as his hosts. It's a look at another culture through the eyes of an American teen. This is a novel based on the author's own experiences. Up Over Down Under by Nicole Osto and Noah Harlan is part of the Students Across the Seven Seas series. A semester-long student exchange is just what Eliza, 16, wants, a chance to experience life away from the public eye. Her father is the assistant administrator of the Envir Environmental Protection Agency, and she must be careful at all times as to what she does and says. Melbourne, Australia sounds great. Belinda, or Billy, is eager to get to Washington, D.C. and help Eliza's father with his job. She is an active environmentalist in Australia and is certain there are, there's plenty to learn in Washington. Both girls have idealized ex expectations and must find a way to temper what they want with what is expected of them. All in all, it's a fun read. Linda Sue Park has written A Long Walk to Water. There are two stories in two different decades. <clears throat> Naya is 11 in 2008-2009. Excuse me. <clears throat> and it is her job to walk the water. Sorry. <clears throat> it is her job to walk the water for the family twice a day. <clears throat> the trip takes her all morning, and the second trip takes her all afternoon. Salva's story begins in 1985, when he is 11. At the beginning of the book, the war comes to his village. The teachers tell the boys to run into the bush and do not go home. Salva soon becomes one of the lost boys of the Sudan. How these stories converge may surprise readers, and it is based on a true story. Hmm. <clears throat> the Day of the Pelican by Catherine Patterson. Almost 12, Meli Leshi and her family soon find they must flee Kosovo, and things are not much safer for them on her uncle's farm due to the escalating violence from Serbians in 1998. The loss of all they own, the hardships in the refugee camp, and the hope that when the family comes to America to settle in Vermont is well told by a skilled author. An author's note at the back of the book gives more information on the history of Kosovo and its situation now. <clears throat> as Easy as Falling Off the Face of the Earth by Lynn Ray Perkins. This is a wacky book. <laughs> Rye is 16 and he's on his way to a summer program when he opens a letter and learns that that program has been canceled. He gets off the train in Montana to try and get uh, some bars on his cell phone. He's up on top of the hill when he watches the train go away. <laughs> so there he is stuck without anything. But one good thing is he meets Dell, who is kind and helpful. And he is so helpful he decides to drive Rye back to his home in Wisconsin. A series of misadventures ensue. It's unusual, compelling, 
will Rai find his parents, his grandpa, his dogs, and with interesting characters. Invisible Girl by Mary Hanlon Stone. Her abusive alcoholic mother and passive father have made Stephanie, 14, her life an unpredictable mess. Now her mother has abandoned them and Stephanie is sent from Boston to L.A. to stay with a friend of her father's family for the summer. Stephanie tries to fit in with Annie's crowd but ends up lying to cover up her real past. When her lies are revealed, she is ignored by the group. Now she is invisible. Stephanie's struggles to find her place are heartfelt and ring true. She still loves her mother, remembering loving moments, but also remembering terrible moments. I look at a girl working on finding herself and finding the inner resolve she needs to deal with the world. <clears throat> non one nonfiction for teens. The second international cookbook for kids. I put this in teens because it's spiral bound. This title offers a variety of recipes from four countries, Brazil, Greece, India, and Thailand. It opens with a two-page spread of safety concerns. The recipes cover appetizers, soups, main dishes, vegetables, noodles, rice, and desserts. Some require more expertise than others, but the author does recommend having an adult as the assistant chef. Um, the information on the book recommends this title for ages 12 and up, so I'm not quite sure why they call it for kids. Yeah. And that's why I put it here, but you can um, certainly make it available to everybody in your yeah. library who may be interested in. Yeah, it sounds like it would be good for anybody just getting into cooking, and you never know when the kids are interested, when your children are interested in that. That's a good point. Um, hopefully it won't scare away the older kids by saying that. <laughs> oh, I hope, I hope so. And a few fiction for older teens. The Education of Bet by Lauren Baratz Logstead. In England, in the 1800s, Bet is 16. She is the illegitimate daughter of a maid, now being allowed to live with her mother's employer, wealthy Paul Gardner, and his grandson Will. Her mother has passed away. Bet and Will grew up as friends, and now Bet, desperate for an education, convinces Will to allow her to attend his new school as Will. Will goes off to join the Army, his own lifelong dream. Bet tried to prepare for everything, but she didn't expect bullies, contact sports, or dances. She had been so protected she had never even seen a cow until the trip to school. Wow. Girl dressed as boy is not new, but this is an entertaining story, and Bet is a wonderful character. Panama by Shelby Hyatt. Living in Dayton, Ohio, next door to the Wright brothers, makes an interesting life for the female main character. No name is ever given to her. When she is 15, in 1910, she and her parents moved to Panama. Her father has been asked to help build a canal. They will be there three years. During this time, the girl sees the differences between those in charge, like her father, and the laborers and local people. She finds a man to love and who loves her. She becomes skilled at lying to her parents so she can spend time with Frederico. She does visit the local madam to learn about birth control after the first time she and Frederico sleep together. Information about the construction of the canal, the treatment of the workers, and the indigenous people is fascinating. Sophomore Switch by Abby McDonald. Last-minute exchange students, college sophomores Natasha, headed to Oxford, and Emily, headed to UC at Santa Barbara, have a lot of adjusting to do. Tasha is escaping the repercussions of her ill-advised hot tub incident and hopes England is far enough away. Emily is leaving behind the pain of losing her boyfriend, who says she is a control freak. And the last book on the list, Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Anna's popular novelist father decides she should spend her senior year of high school at a boarding school in Paris instead of at home in Atlanta, Georgia. She is lost at first, everything from ordering breakfast in French <laughs> to her first year French classes new, but she finds some friends quickly and slowly begins to find her place. It's a look at life in a different new place, some humor, heartache, and some romance. And that's the list. Yeah, cool. So okay. I did want to take just a couple more minutes mm -hmm. to show you one other thing. And if I can actually right see it right there. Yep. I want to show you on our web page, if you go to search this site and type in handouts, this, this is the best way to find it right now, Lib Nebraska Library Commission handouts. Click on that. This is all me. It doesn't have to be all me, but right now it is all mine. 
And so I will be putting up my um, updated list. Right now you can click here and see what I had on my list at the, the NLA NEMA conference. And the good thing about this is, oh wait, it doesn't. I'm, I'm so wrong. Huh? I thought it had the blurbs. I guess it's just this one that has the blurbs. No. Why didn't yeah. we get that up there? All right, I will be fixing that. But well, there, there's an extra link there with Sally's oh, description. Uh, there it's we a separate go. Link. There yeah. we go. I, see, so if I talk too fast or not loud enough or something, you can click on this page. And this is basically what I said for that session. Mm -hmm. And we'll be adding my um, spring 2011 mm -hmm. update of the summer reading program list so that you will get my my descriptions and blurbs along with the list of all the titles and what the order information is. So I hope that's helpful too. Now I was going to ask if anybody had anything to ask um, us or yeah, any questions. Anybody have any, question, anybody have any questions, comments, uh, suggestions? Oh, we have some thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> thank you for so many people <laughs> signing on to attend today. And I hope that other people will take the opportunity to um, listen to this and, and view it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, definitely great ideas for uh, people getting ready and trying to get their summer reading program off the ground. <laughs> um, doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment. Okay. So. Um, so I think we will wrap it up for today. I just wanted to... Uh, Um, let you know um, this was recorded, so we will. Uh, whoops! I didn't catch all my typing. There we go. I hope you will join us next week when our Encompass Live will be about our talking book and Braille service here at the Library Commission. We're going to have some actual users of the system of the service who are using the new digital player and um, talking books um, come and share their experiences with us. So that'll be our Encompass Live for next week. So I hope you will join us then. And thank you very much for attending this morning. We will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.